now it's it's recording. Okay, everybody, we're back with another uh, brand new show here, and that's uh, in your book. It talks about limited liability companies, but I don't want to confuse you because these are really a form of corporation, and what they are, it begins to be more and more about a merger between. Uh, proprietorships, partnerships, and corporations, all in one. And so what they've tried to do is they've tried to develop a system that draws the best features from each thing, uh, each type of business, and then form a new type of business, which is kind of a hybrid of all the other kinds. So basically the advantage of limited liability corporation is that it provides full protection for its members from all personal liability, whether rising in tort or contract, but they must comply with all statutes. And the problem that you get in with a lot of them, they start off good, they create them really well, and then they just don't keep the books up. And that's true of about all corporations. So important to consider the difference between an LLC and an LLP that we've been discussing. LLPs are specific for partnerships, that's uh, just a type of a partnership governed primarily by partnership principles. LLCs is an entirely new form of business enterprise. It's not really any of the above except uh, it's more like a corporation in the end because of all the filing requirements and that type thing. Uh, only a few what we call shield states offer full protection for LLP partnerships, and that's very unusual. And so basically what it's saying is that if a co-partner, like a general partner, commits an act, uh, it could bring in the uh, actually limited partners uh, who basically didn't even know what's going on, but they're more likely going to be accused of doing what was going on. Whereas the difference is that in the LLC statutes, there is full protection from personal liability for everybody that's involved. Uh, and that's true whether it's in tort or contract. All states but Wyoming permit one person limited liability company or corporations. And that would be uh, a obviously derivative form of a sole proprietorship. Uh, LLPs, however, must have at least two members. So an LLP cannot be also a sole proprietorship, but a sole proprietorship can be an LLC. Uh, so that's a, that's a difference in, in 49 states. Uh, LLPs are a variety of partnership and they uh, must be formed in a uh, for-profit type purpose. There's no such thing as an LLP in a charitable endeavor like a church or uh, some kind of other charity. LLCs, however, are frequently formed as nonprofit uh, companies. Generally, the traditional professions such as law, accounting, and medicine are the majority of LLPs, whereas business in some other, other emerging professions like computer consulting, marketing, and management tend to adopt the LLC form. Limited liability and full management is a very big advantage of LLC. So that the general partner, you know, he has to carry all the liability in an LLP, whereas in an LLC, everybody, including the uh, leadership, uh, are subject to limited liability. And then the other thing is there's a flexible form of management. Uh, you can have one person LLCs and you have the advantage of tax through or pass through tax status, which is uh, just like a partnership or a sole proprietorship. There are some disadvantages. Uh, you cannot transfer the interest from one member of an LLC to another. Uh, there's very little case law because it's not been around that long, so it's tough to know what the outcome of a case would be. Uh, formation can be slightly complex and expensive. Uh, some states uh, limit the LLC to a term of years, 
and it's generally 30, whereas a standard corporation can be formed in perpetuity, meaning infinity or forever. Uh, variations among state statutes make it complicated for some businesses to operate nationwide as an LLC. So it's difficult to domesticate them from one state to another. And those can be states like Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, very close to each other, Michigan, uh, but they all have slightly different rules. Uh, there is an operating agreement under an LLC. It has the name of the LLC. Uh, it has the names and addresses of all members. Certain recitals, uh, you know, that you know they're going to do, everything they're going to do is going to abide by the laws of whatever state. Uh, the purpose, they're going to have a legal purpose that they're going to be what they're there for. Are they there to practice law? Are they there to do any kind of legal business? Uh, there's a term of years. Uh, there is a mailing address or a legal address for the LLC. Uh, and uh, here again, you can in some states have perpetuity as the term of years, but in other states you can't. It has to be 30 years. LLC has certain powers. Uh, it also has financial provisions as to, you know, how is it going to be owned? What's the, how's the ownership going to be broken down? Needs to be information up there how about how it's going to operate. Uh, you know, what are they going to be doing? Is it a service business? Is it a uh, uh, manufacturing kind of business? You know, it has to go into some detail. It has to spell out details on the meetings and, you know, what constitutes a vote. One thing in corporations that you need to understand, you know, like with a partnership, one man, one vote. I don't care if you own two-thirds of the company. You're still one partner. you got one vote. Well, in a corporation, you can actually adopt a form that, depending on your investment, that's how many votes you get. So let's say the whole company is uh, book valued at $100,000, and one of the uh, owners put in $60,000. So he gets 60 out of 100 votes. And so then the other people that put in the rest, they put in 5,000, they get five votes, you know, this type of thing. Uh, mission of new members and dissociation of members. You have to have a plan in place. So if someone says, hey, I've got cancer, I've got to sell out my interest in this corporation or business or LLC, please, you know, work, at, work with me. You ought to have that all pre-designed, pre-planned. Uh, transferability, you can put limits on transferability like uh, first right of refusal. Anybody wants to sell out, they have to offer it to everybody in the business first before they can offer it to anybody on the outside. Also, how will it be dissolved? Will uh, any leftover monies uh, go to all the partners? Will it just uh, go to uh, charity? How are you going to handle if there's money left over when you dissolve the corporation? And then you can also have what we call miscellaneous provisions. Well, there's some key important features here, and these are uh, they offer full protection. We've stressed that several times for all the members, and that uh, is for any kind of tort or contract liability. Somebody slips on your sidewalk, you're protected. Somebody says, well, you hired me, and then you fired me, and it was unfair. That's a contract type case. You're protected. LLCs can be managed by members or by appointed members. You can have employees run it for you. Uh, LLCs can be formed only by compliance with state statutes. That's a big difference between the informal, you know, handshake type partnership or a sole proprietorship. No requirements to file any papers with the state. Whereas on this one, you do have to file papers. And you have to follow a certain form. And one thing about that that I'll mention to you is if you go to the Secretary of State for any state, and one of the things that we'll do eventually is we'll look at going to the state of Delaware, looking at their forms, going to the state of Indiana, looking at their forms. Those are some of your assignments that you'll be doing here a little bit later. And so those are all available on the Internet, and uh, easily you can Google those and you can find out just a whole lot of specific information. So you may want to do that and just look and see if you can find a standard form for an LLC for Indiana, Delaware, wherever, uh, and then go from there. Uh, LLCs are governed by these operating 
uh, agreements. They're kind of similar to uh, that LLP agreement, but they're also similar to the Articles of Incorporation. Uh, maybe a little less complicated than the Articles of uh, Incorporation, but real similar. In many instances, a member's dissociation does not dissolve the LLC. That could be a major problem in some of these uh, partnerships. If one partner wants out, the whole thing shuts down, you know, and you got a good thing going. Maybe they've got a health issue or something, uh, mental illness, you just never know, uh, and they've got to get out of it. Well, that could ruin the whole thing, you know. Uh, LLCs provide the path through for taxation, just like a partnership, so that's a very important feature. Well, hey, uh, ran through this pretty quickly, but I'm trying to keep it down within our time limits of about 15 minutes. I hope you got something out of this. As you can see, this is a further development from sole proprietorship, partnership, uh, limited partnership, limited liability partnership, and now limited liability company or corporation, depending on what state you're in. So basically, I uh, hope you gain something from it. If you have any questions, you know you can always contact me at robdaywalt at me.com or contact me through the information in the syllabus. Thanks for watching. Back soon with another short virtual lecture. Thank you.